All right, welcome uh, to Zeros of Polynomials. Uh, we're going to kind of give you a little bit more supplemental information about uh, zeros of polynomials so we can kind of get a little work on there. So first thing, let's go ahead and remind ourselves, if we're given a graph here, um, you know, a polynomial can be really any kind of search thing. You know, we can have a linear polynomial, you can have a quadratic polynomial, but there's an important thing that we're going to talk about today, and that is the zeros of the polynomial. And essentially, if we look at this and we say, here's our x-axis and here's our f of x, or our y-axis, remember that's your input and that's your output. The zeros of our polynomial are going to be when f of x is equal to zero. So if we're given a, you know, a linear um, you know, function, it's going to be fairly simple to uh, solve for x. For instance, let's say I have f of x equals x plus 3. Well, then to solve for our zeros, you just plug 0 in for f of x and you have x plus 3. Subtracting 3 on both sides, you'd have the zeros are going to be x is equal to negative 3. Now, once we start getting into higher order polynomials where our degrees are higher than 1, we're going to have to start using some different techniques to solve. So that's what we're going to kind of go over today is, you know, the different way techniques that we can solve. A um, couple of those ways is, you know, what we're going to talk about is factoring out the polynomial. Uh, our factoring a polynomial. Now before we get into our factoring techniques, there is one thing I want to make sure that we also remember is the multiplicity. If you look at this polynomial, you'll see it crosses at this zero, but it touches at this zero and then returns back to its graph. This is what we say of having an even multiplicity, and here is what we call having an odd multiplicity. So an odd multiplicity is when your graph is going to cross the x-axis or have a, z a intercept that crosses, and an even multiplicity is when you're going to have an intercept that is going to touch the x-axis but never crosses it. Now a way that we're going to be determining this is by this quick little formula for our factors where x minus k raised to the n power. Now whenever we have a factor x minus k and that factor is raised to an odd power we're going to have odd multiplicity. So when n is odd we have odd multiplicity. And you can kind of say the same thing. When n is going to be even, you're going to have even multiplicity. So I just kind of wanted to go through those you know, for you. And because now what we're going to do is let's get on to how to find exactly when we have our multiplicity or how we're finding what exactly our factors are so we can determine the multiplicity. So the first thing I want to do when we're solving for this is I want to set f of x equal to 0. Okay. So we have f of, x equal, f of x equals x to the fifth plus x third minus 6x. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to put 0 in for f of x, and then say it's going to be x to the fifth plus x cubed minus 6x. Now the second thing you always want to do is try to factor out any GCF or any common terms. So I'm just going to write factor your greatest common factors or any kind of common terms you have. Well, we notice that all three of these terms you can factor out in x. So I'll have 0 equals x times x to the fourth plus x squared minus 6. Now, in this problem, what we'll notice is we're going to use a, a factoring technique called substitution. And what the substitution method tells us is rather than dealing with x to the fourth and x squared, we don't really like factoring um, this trinomial with x to the fourth and x squared. What I'm going to choose to do is I'm going to rather say, let's say let x to the fourth equal x squared and let x squared equal x. Therefore, now what I do is when I substitute in those values, I'm going to have something that's going to be much easier for me to work with. So I have x times x squared plus x minus 6. Now what I can do is I can use my fact I can use a trinomial factoring technique where I can say what two numbers are going to multiply to give me negative 6 but then add to give me my b which is 1. So I can write it like this sometimes negative 6 and 1. So what two numbers multiply to give me negative 6 but then add to give me 1. And what you could say is well a positive 3 and a negative 2 multiply to give me negative 6 but then add to give me 1. So let's say 0 equals x and we could write x is x times 0 if we wanted to put it into our form of x minus k, but we'll just leave it as x. Then x plus 3 times x minus 2. And what you notice, if you were to factor this back out or foil it back out, what you'll notice is you would get back your trinomial. 
So now what we notice is I have three set in factors. So now they're in factored form. I need to determine, are they going to be even or odd multiplicity? Well, since each one of these can be raised to the first power, we can determine that. And actually, you know, let me just show you why, because I don't want you to be making the mistake later on. What you'll notice is they all have an odd multiplicity. So therefore, these are all going to be an odd multiplicity. And your zeros, now you can set each one of these equal to zero. So zero equals x minus zero, zero equals x plus three, and zero equals x minus two. Now, solving for zero, my zeros are going to be x equals zero, subtract three on both sides, x equals negative three, and when I add a two to both sides, I will have x equals two. So therefore, my three zeros are x equals zero, negative three, and two. Now, let's look at another problem where now, um, actually, let's just end it on there. I'll come back to this problem next.